Hello everybody, hope you're all doing fantastically well. It is Connor here and I would like to say, just starting off with the stream, as you can tell I've got a big stupid grin on my face and it is a massive, massive thank you for something that even a couple of months ago I didn't think was really that attainable. As you guys know I've been going full throttle with one leads over the past sort of four and a half weeks and uh, it's grown pretty even substantially in that period of time. So a, a big thank you to everybody, absolutely every single one of you who's tuned in. I'm still looking at you, 36% who aren't subscribed, and I'm, I swear to, no, I'm joking, I'm joking, but it'd be nice if you could. Um, but yeah, I'd like to say a massive thank you to everybody. I'll sort something out, I'll figure something out, but it's so busy on the channel at the minute with Patreon videos, with little videos I'm thinking of, with getting to the games and just doing the regular streams that I do on the channel. Obviously, I'm not putting out excuses and designing merchandise, which I've got. I've done the first bit of today. I've done that all by myself, which has been a task in itself. Um, but yeah, guys, there's a lot going on on the channel to try and improve. But I just want to say a big thank you. We've hit 30,000 subscribers today, which is ridiculous um, for someone like myself who started doing this. And I want to go on a bit of a, a moany emotional rant uh, to start off with, but started doing this in Australia when I was living over there. Uh, under the Marcelo Bielsa days when I just wanted to talk about Leeds and give my opinions and, and all that sort of stuff to where we are today, which is 30,000 strong, which is ridiculous. My old man said to me, look, Connor, it's, uh, you know, it's sort of like 6,000 off what a full Ellen Road would, would be. And he said that to me and it really hit home. <laughs> um, so thank you so much uh, to absolutely everybody, all the Patreons, all the subscribers, all the channel members. Um, and I'm just going to shout out a couple of people as well. Uh, there was a couple of thanks um, on the videos, which is a th there's a thanks option below the video now, just on the two, the three I, the three dots, you can press it. And there's a thanks option if you just want a one-off donation. Shout out Simon Hart. Um, thank you so much, buddy. And Seatsy Baby uh, with a lovely comment as well. Um, I'd like to just shout out to four new members uh, of the channel as well. We've got Jaguar, shout out to you, mate. Uh, Sylvan, hello. Steve Wardle and Fraser. Scott, thank you all so much um, for helping me get to this milestone and, you know, listening to me talk absolute waffle for the best part of, listen, it's been nearly four years. Can you believe it? Some of you OGs will have been here from the start. Some of you people will be new, but it's been nearly four years. And I will admit, I had 18 months where I pretty much had it off. I really did. I didn't put as much into the channel as I was doing beforehand, but now I hope that you're getting that value back with the work that I'm trying to put in now. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate all the lovely comments coming in. I definitely can't get them all up here. Um, but yeah, I just listen. Look at look at all those. Thank you so much. Um, really, really appreciate it. Some lovely, lovely comments coming in. Um, and, and and yeah, yeah. As, as Brett says, now for 40k. Listen, if you guys want to be part of a little community as well, um, we've got a Discord in, in the chat below. You get notifications on on from um Obi Wan, who's a who's a top moderator in the group. He lets you know all you guys know when I'm about to upload. We've got a nice little WhatsApp sort of group in there as well, where I'll chime in. Um, on the Patreon, a little bit of a schedule as well. We've got uh, Generation Leads to, uh, on Wednesday. We've got um, Across the Pond tomorrow, and we've got the General as well on Thursday. So there you go. Okay, you've heard me waffling. <laughs> You've heard me, you know, going on about this, that, and the other. Um, celebrate 30k by getting a matchbox per game. You, your dad, and a few. Honestly, Nigel, if I could afford it, mate, <laughs> I would. I really would. And that would be fantastic. If I could get a matchbox, that would be amazing. But I can't afford that, mate, unfortunately. Uh, one day, though, maybe. One day, maybe. Eh? Uh, maybe when we get to sort of... Maybe one day if we get to 100,000, I can maybe sort that out. <laughs> uh, Hammers, thank you so much, buddy. Congratulate um, on 30K, my dude. As I say, that sort of helps me with all the subscriptions and stuff with the channel. It all goes straight back into it. Um, so, yeah, fantastic stuff. You're all here to hear me talk about the rumour mill. You're all here to talk. Um, to, listen, we've got, we're going to have a, a, a sort of discussion as well. The stream um, is going to go on till, till a little bit later on tonight because we have the FA Cup draw 10 to 8. Uh, that's been drawn. Let me know what you want in the section below. Listen, uh, Scummer playing Wigan tonight as well. Would you want another Scum away trip? I don't really know if I would, to be honest. <laughs> After just the batterings we've taken there. I was there for the 1-0 Beckford one, and I've not been since, and I'm happy with that. My old man was there for Brian Flynn in 1981. 1-0 win at Old Trafford. 
Um, and I don't think he ever wants to go back again. But that is the, the cup draw of all cup draws for 10,000 Leeds fans to descend on Manchester in somewhat a replica of the 2010 uh, game. And hopefully we may be able to give a, a better account of ourselves um, as opposed to the 5-1 and 6-2 demolitions that were served. Um, subscribers pay for a box. I don't think so, mate. But yeah, appreciate that, buddy. Appreciate that. Uh, can't wait for the Etihad away. Yeah, uh, got me through COVID. Thanks so much, Darren. Uh, remember you're doing videos outside in Australia. Uh, yeah, honestly, guys, just for a bit of a bit of banter after this, if you've got a bit of time, go on to One Leads and filter it to the oldest videos. You'll have a right laugh. You'll have a right laugh. So yeah, I think we've come quite a far, uh, a long way, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, and as I say, everyone, please make sure you're smashing that subscribe button. We'll do something. We'll, do, we'll I'll need to think of something. It's just been chaotic at the minute. And I didn't think I'd hit 30,000 so quickly when I've been back into it. So thank you so much once again. Really, really appreciate it. Jersey giveaway. Yeah, there is. And, and potentially there's, um, you know, as I say, we've got a bit of merch that's, that's out now. Listen, check down below. There's a store section. And you can check out some um, some of Bill Strauch and Perot merch, which I've designed myself and you might like. Uh, anyway, um, so you can see in the title, Celtic and Rangers. Celtic and Rangers. Now, Connor, what are you waffling on about with Celtic and Rangers? Both Glaswegian clubs are in a battle. Yes, a battle for the signature of our young striker who's getting absolutely zilch when it comes to game time. Joffy Joseph Gelhart. It's very interesting. Do you call him Joffy Gelhart? I don't. Normally, I call him Joe Gelhart or just Joffy. But there's a lot of people, including Oscar Marriott, who call him Joffy Gelhart. Don't really understand it. What's your preference? Let me know in the comment section below. Um, I'm going mental again. Uh, but yeah, it's Joffy Gelhart. It's a bit odd, I think. But anyway, uh, yeah, apparently Brendan Rodgers and uh, Philippe Clement are battling it out to sign Joffy. Now, what did we learn from Graham Bailey? Graham Bailey, who was the journalist on the channel last week, was talking about the significance of Joe Gelhart and a bit of the problem that Leeds are having offloading him. Leeds want a contribution to his wage structure. The big issue at this moment in time is that clubs are only willing to put a certain portion in. When it comes to a permanent fixture, Graham was bang on the money last week. There's been loads of reports today suggesting that there's going to be, have to be almost a compensation for Leeds United to put into the loan structure for Joff to, I'm going to do it again, for Joe Gelhart to move to Celtic or Rangers. Now, two loan moves, that would be unbelievable for Gelhart. Unbelievable in terms of his development, going up to either one of the two massive Glaswegian clubs. I am not going to say which one I favour, because if you say on any stream you prefer Celtic or Rangers, that's a problem. And listen, we've just got to 30k. I don't want to lose all those subs subscribers, or at least half of them, indeed. Um, but yeah, so both Glaswegian clubs are apparently battling it out for Joe Gelhart, which is a very positive um, uh, thing for Gelhart. He'll be loving that. Obviously, he's a Liverpool lad anyway. We know Celtic and Liverpool have that connection, the you'll never walk alone thing as well. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what happens there. And his development... Hopefully, we'll get a lot better. We'll get a lot more game time. Hopefully, that's going to be in a verbal agreement with Leeds United and and either Celtic or Rangers. Um, so yeah, that that'll be great. To, <coughs> excuse me, that'll be great to see Gelhart get some game time up there. And it's a bit more of an exciting loan in comparison. No offense to a, a Peterborough or a Derby County or something like that, which is what I was thinking was going to be his next venture. So Leeds, as Graham have said. Um, have got him on a big wage structure, a big wage packet. If you do remember, it was Leeds were battling it out with numerous clubs to get Joe Gelhart's signature. And clearly, he was enticed, not only by the pathway at Leeds United, but also by the wage structure. Bought by Leeds United, and he's on a very, very good wage structure, as Graham said, and as we've, we've learned today, through several Scottish reports as well. Um, the Observer up there as well, the reporter, have all suggested that Joe Gelhart is on decent wages at Leeds United and there may need to be a compensation for either Rangers or Celtic to afford him. Uh, probably a Celtic fan with your Irish background. No, uh, no shame in that. No comment, mate. No comment. Could be Rangers. Could be Rangers, but... Uh, no comment on that one. Um, hi, Connor. Uh, keep up the great work. I work with your dad in Tadcaster. Hey, top man, Si. Um, I don't know if he's at work tonight, to be fair. <laughs> um, I think it might be his, his, uh, his night off. Bless him. Uh, he'll probably be watching. So shout out to you, Si. Thanks so much. I'll try to remember your name and, and, and let him know. What is it? Simon Fletcher, top man. Uh, Paul's in the building. Connor, the original and the best. 
uh, on form as ever. Keep it real, pal. Top man. Uh, yeah, appreciate that, Paul. Um, thank you as well. Lovely, lovely um, comments in there. Leeds United Calypso. I'd have thought Celtic and Rangers could afford the wages. They normally pay decent wages. I guess it depends, Leeds United Calypso, because obviously Gelhart will have been on Premier League wages. We know they had to reduce their wages when they went down to the Championship. But, you know, we, Joffy could still have been on a very, very decent whack and could still be on a very decent whack right now. So, you know, Celtic and Rangers have obviously got a half decent wage structure, but I don't think it's it's in, in I don't think you can really compare their wage structure. In my opinion, could be wrong to what it is in the upper echelon of the championship, especially when the teams that have come down are the teams that have come down who've had Premier League wage structures for multiple years, and that includes Leeds United. Uh, yeah, uh, loads of comments coming in. Good evening, Connor. Need Cooper and Bamford to go now. <laughs> yeah, uh, Joffy very injury prone, hasn't pro uh, progressed. Uh, could do well if he can stay fit. Uh, best be Celtic or, or unsubscribed. That's why I never give my comments on that, mate. Uh, congrats on 30k, Connor. Is there any truth in Aronson coming back? Uh, do we bring him back into the fold? There is truth in it, mate. He is not enjoying his time whatsoever out in Berlin. I mentioned this morning that what I'm trying to do with the rumour mill now is you guys know I'm sort of in that field. So what I'm trying to do now is follow up with a lot of very good journalists in the fields, in the, in the fields. <laughs> God, it's been a long day, everyone. In the field, um, to try see if if they've got any additional information. The stream this morning, we had three journalists get back to me this morning and all almost like confirm what we all, what we actually thought. But it just takes away that sort of um sort of feeling of doubt that some of us may have. It was on Ailing, it was on Somerville and Nonto, so go check that out definitely. Um, but when it comes to uh obviously the stuff that we're talking about there with Brendan Aronson, Graham was saying last week that he believes there's a big big chance that he could come back to Leeds a big chance that he could come back to Leeds and if he wants to go out on loan again there might be another club who we can you know go on loan to Leeds might be able to sell him highly doubtful once again wages are going to be high um but or he can fit into the fold is there any place for him at Leeds United um <clears throat> on the bench for maybe 10-15 minutes and I've been I'm, I'm, I'm listen I was saying last night that I'm not being contradictory um and I don't think I have for certain things but some people might turn around and say, look, can't even contradictory only when it comes to Aronson. Um, listen, if he comes on for 15 minutes, runs around like a headless chicken and wins possession in the final third and gives the ball to Christ Ezio Somerville, that's fine with me. Does he start in the championship? Absolutely not. Um, and he could prove me wrong, but I highly doubt it. So who knows? Shout out to Brett, another member of the channel. Hi, hi Andrew. Hope you're all good, mate. Uh, would this be a loan or permanent? Who are we talking about here, mate? Are we talking about um, Joff? It would be a loan. It would be a loan, it looks like. I think Leeds are going to struggle to get him off the... I honestly think Leeds are going to struggle to get him off the books uh, with what he's on at the minute. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but shout out to all you new members right now. Um, obviously, the, the, the FA Cup draw, <clears throat> very prestigious. And what we're going to do, everybody, is I'm going to sort of talk you through the draw. I can't, unfortunately, show you live what's going on with some sort of... Uh, live feed to ITV or whatever. So get your get your sets on. We're going to do the rumor mill directly after this, where we've got Tottenham chat, we've got Willie Nyonso chat again, we've got um, players uh, leaving the club and, and 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 a culmination of of fees. We've got pundits having opinions as well on Leeds United players and them not and not wanting them to leave and why. And we're going to have our opinions on that. And I want to get your thoughts. It's going to be a bit of a bumper show tonight. <clears throat> but we are going to talk about some rumours before it kicks off because this stuff takes so long anyway. We know that. But yeah, um, <clears throat> so yeah, we're going to be doing the FA Cup live. Listen, let me know in the comment section below, are you bothered about the FA Cup? I, I used to love it. I, I did used to love it, but it, it, it has died a little bit for me. And I think it's because Leeds are absolutely tragic most of the time when it comes to the FA Cup. So um, yeah, uh, it, well, it's supposed to be. Um, what time? It's supposed to be at 7.50, mate. So we're waiting on for that right now. We're just seeing Sean Maloney. Uh, not one past scum, obviously. Leeds are... Uh, Leeds are, I imagine. Um, Wigan are playing Manchester United tonight. Andrew says, who do you think we will draw? Um, I think it's probably going to be a, a bit of a tin pot team, mate. It wouldn't surprise me if it was someone like... Um, Burton Albion <laughs> it really wouldn't so we'll have to wait and see uh, can Brendan play left back I don't think he can mate I don't think he can um, but let me know who you want who you want Joe Wood says we're not going to win it so I'm not asked about it I'd rather focus on the league 
Joe, it's defeatist, but I'm very much in your camp, mate. I'm very much like, I, I, it's going to be interesting to see who we get, but I'm, I'm, I'm more wanting to talk about the rumour mill with you guys and get on with transfers and stuff. So let's let's get into it a little bit anyway. So um, I want to just, just highlight a few bits before we get into the FA Cup. Uh, it looks like Willy Nyonto is going to be approached, according to several reports, by Fulham and West Ham. Now, earlier on today, I spoke to Chris Beasley of the uh, Liverpool Echo and asked him, I said, Chris, what's going on? What's going on with Willy Nyonto? Is this Everton link going to happen? Is it going to materialise? He turned around to me and he said, Connor, I don't think so. He said he believes that Everton are going to be struggling with FFP. We all know that. But he said, keep an eye on what happens with Dwight McNeil. He said that it wouldn't be surprising um, from uh, in, you know when he's when from what he knows with with his colleague Joe Thomas, if if Willie Nonto's agent is trying to galvanise that move, and we all know that anyway, we all think that's going to be happening. However, um, it all comes down to finance, as we know. So what's going to be happening there is Willie Nonto going to leave Leeds United, both Fulham and West Ham coming into the picture are a completely different proposition, aren't they? Because Fulham and West Ham, we know they have capital. They don't face the FFP problems that we're seeing with Everton and Newcastle when it comes to quite essentially Somerville and the valuation that Newcastle would have to put up for him. So these are two completely different prospects now. and We've seen it, several pages are mentioning it right now when it comes to Fulham, when it comes to West Ham. And apparently, um, just a report from Dean Jones as well, claims that Fulham is showing an interest and West Ham and Leeds are looking to find an agreement. Um, reports say 13 million. Um, but I mean, I was mentioned earlier on today, Leeds were knocking back fees of 25 million quid. So when I was speaking in the stream earlier on, I was sort of looking more at the 20 to 22 million pound valuation. Presumably that's what it's going to be with add-ons, all that boring stuff, installments. And that's what I think it's going to be with Leeds, with Willie Nyon. So it'll probably round about the 20 million mark to keep player, to keep agent and to keep the club happy. He's under contract. I hear you cry. I know he is everybody, but he's not even getting the minutes from Daniel Farker. It's fair enough if Farker was playing him week in, week out and Nonso was kicking off and Nonso said, well, I actually still want to go. But he's, he's, he's barely playing him. He plays him in the FA Cup game and he brings him on every five and ten minutes and he'll, he'll put him on for 40 minutes in one game and that'll be it. And then the next game it'll be five, it'll be ten. He just doesn't fancy him to play in front of Dan James. So that's where you kind of got to say with Willing on. So, well, fair enough, you know. And if you do want to move, if your agent's pushing for that move, then we've got to... You, you, at some point, Leeds are going to have to have to play their hand, really. And maybe this is when, you know, his stock's still relatively high. Clubs are interested. It's going to be fascinating to see. Away to Wrexham. Paul still wants that one. Uh, I'd like to see Wrexham, but probably get Man City. Man City won't surprise me as well. Um, the cup run would be great. Uh, rather have Nonso in the Premier. If we'll get there, though, I'd agree with you there, Lucas. I think you're spot on. Uh, Willie Nonso uh, will, never be, will never be the next Rafinha, but I'm gutted we didn't utilise his talent enough. Um, we're going to get on to the Archie Gray chat, but there is, an, there is Archie Gray chat as well. Everybody, we're going to speak on that. Um, home draw, please, says Sam. I think Willie, says Bowie, made it clear to Daniel Farker after the summer window he wanted to leave. Ensway hasn't given him a load of time. Uh, Nonto will go uh, this window. Um, Nonto wants to be back in Italy drinking his Moretti and eating spaghetti. Potentially, there is interest as well from Serie A, but we know with Serie A clubs, they don't have the capital that the Premier League clubs have. Honestly, you're probably looking at a scenario where Fulham are richer than Juventus. And that is the scenario of the Premier League in comparison to a lot of the European leagues at this minute, this moment in time. Oh, dear me. Uh, contract's always been broken. Yeah. Oh, Forrest, a great test for this team. Oh, interesting. A bit of a unique one there. So, yeah, guys, it looks like that. And now, listen, we're going to speak about Archie Gray as well. Um... Archie Gray, apparently Tottenham Hotspur are weighing up a move for him this summer. A new report from the Mail and the Mirror suggests that Ange Postacoglu is a massive fan um, and Tottenham are long-term admirers and they've sent scouts to Ellen Road to watch him. Um, but they, the, the Mail and the Mirror are reporting that this is going to be something uh, that's going to happen in the summer. We know that teams are going to test leaders' resolve. We know Man City have been down to Ellen Road and Thorpe Arch with scouts, um, but the Whites are confident that he's going to sign a new contract when he's 18, of course, which will give, once again, Leeds more capital when it comes to um, obviously being able to deal with the likes of Daniel Levy. And you never know, we may be able to weigh in Joe Rodon in that deal as almost a part exchange, but for Tottenham to still give us £155 billion for Archie Gray. But yeah, 
I think, guys, it's going to be increasingly difficult for us to keep hold of Archie Gray um, this uh, this 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 summer. But this 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 uh, January, I think it's going to be absolutely fine. Uh, Fifty mil for Archie, I'd take a hundred percent. Gray, uh, don't take any less than fifty million. Uh, guys, it looks like we're about to get into the FA Cup draw. Um, so uh, yeah, I will keep you guys updated on on exactly. Uh, what's going on? Uh, please let me know uh, who who you'd like to get. I'm seeing a lot of Wrexhams in there. I don't know if there's a lot of Welsh fans in. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be fascinating to see who gets who in this. Um, really, really interesting. So we'll get on with the room mill after that. And I want to hear your thoughts on Archie Gray. Uh, but it looks like the draw is about to be made on this one. Um, We'll get you over. We'll get um, a little bit of Sky updates on, on a separate page here just for you guys. Let me just set that up. So we'll go for the in-game. We'll switch on over here. And we will be able to go, hopefully, through the live draw, everybody. Please let me know who you want. Um, and the FA Cup draw is live. It should be. should get a few updates here. Here's the fourth round of the draw. Leeds United are number 12. And they're waffling on like they always do. They always do this at the FA Cup. We have to go through who, who this guy's played for before and all that sort of stuff. So here we go. Uh, Eastley, <laughs> I'd take Ben Johnson and Corner in a swap for none. So would you take Adam Eder, Connor? I, I mean, I think, you, was it you, Bob, who mentioned Adam Eder this morning? I'm a massive fan of Adam Eder. Um, yeah, cheers, Johnny. Uh, what a milestone, Connor. Grats, my mate, 30k. Well done, top man, pal. Uh, Leicester at home, says uh, Brett. Who do you want, Connor? Um, do you know what? I wouldn't mind a little, I, I wouldn't mind, you know, like a little bit of a Wrexham away. Just Wrexham, just, I don't know, they're... A, Getting a bit too big for the boots, aren't they? I'd kind of like, I know, listen, there's a lot of Welsh fans in here, but I'd kind of like uh, Leeds to go down there and just pepper them up a little bit. I've got no ill will towards Wrexham <laughs> whatsoever. But um, yeah, a little bit, a few antics with Shrewsbury at the weekend from their social media team. Where I thought maybe they do need a big boy to just go down there and, and batter them. Obviously, uh, Chef United couldn't do the job. So let's send Leeds United down there. And it's a great atmosphere down there. Some really passionate fans. Uh, Wrexham have got Blackburn. There we go. Wrexham have got Blackburn. Ooh. I think this is the most terrible live draw ever. <laughs> we'll go back and see if there's anything on. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's Watford Southampton as well. No, oh, guys, I'm I'm way behind here. We've got Blackburn and Wrexham. You guys will probably know before me here. So you're just going to hit see my reaction. <laughs> um, yeah, you're going to just see my reaction, I think, everybody. So, yeah, you guys can probably give me a live update, to be honest. As I say, I'm watching it on ITV now. Leeds number 12. If you guys aren't watching it. Bournemouth. Versus, <laughs> you guys are just going to know all this before me, aren't you? Bomber Swansea. There we go. <laughs> Man United at Ellen Road, says Graham. West Brom versus Brentford or Wolves. It's number 28. <laughs> yeah, exactly, mate. Exactly. ITV won on a uh, on a really non dodgy fire stick. If you get my drift, number six, West Ham. Yeah, I know, mate. Paul, I know you're gonna have to update me, mate. Wednesday versus Coventry. Ooh. <laughs> Is that what you want, Neil? Or have we just got them? Don't tell me we've just got them away, please. In all fairness, it'd be quite easy for me. Chelsea Villa. Ooh, that's a good one. Chelsea versus Aston Villa. Really good one. Q 
keep going. Connor, I'm trying to drive you. Chelsea Villa, mate, that's what it is. I'm crazy far behind. I, I am as well. What Neil says what he wants uh, is uh, Man City away. Ipswich Maidstone. Jammy Gits. Did you see Ipswich's goal at the weekend, by the way, everybody? Did you see Ipswich's goal? Unbelievable how jammy it was. Was it Broadhead? Bloody, you just can't believe it. The amount of jammy goals they've got this season is staggering. Why are we not getting anything on this live stream, by the way? Yeah, I want to be up to date, but you're not making me up to date. You're just showing me these crap adverts. Show me the latest update. Okay, here we go. Mike Jones, the slowest updater of all time. <laughs> Mike, two minutes ago updating. Come on, Mike, lad, you're on the live blog. That's what we've got so far, everyone. Spurs City. Oh, I'm sorry. Gabe, I've got to wait for them to come out of the bloody pot, mate. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I've got to wait for them to come out of the pot. I can just I can hum for you if you want. Um, Tottenham versus City, that's a good one. Leeds at home. Oh, God. Leeds at home to Plymouth. Well... What I will say is, oh god, we can stop watching this tripe now. Thank God. Um, you gave you strike me as an ASMR guy. I'm not gonna lie, you do strike me as an ASMR guy. <laughs> yeah, at least it's at home. So the good thing about this, as we get off this terrible, terrible FA Cup draw, um, the good thing about that is it's at home, and you're probably thinking that is going to be a guarantee for Leeds United. There's no guarantees in the cup. They will not be happy with that, Plymouth. You know, you'd be wanting a big draw, but that is a for me, that's a win for Leeds. It's got to be a win. It's got to be a a, a a fifth round tie there for Leeds, which is good. Imagine if we get home again in the fifth as well. I don't mind that whatsoever. I really don't. So that's all positive. Leeds United against Plymouth. That that and I'm I'm not too, being too cocky here, but I thought when Plymouth came to us, somehow we we only put two past them. It was two one. They got one back, and I couldn't believe they got one back. But that first half was just absolute dominance. I believe they had Schumacher as coach there as well. Obviously, he's left now. Uh, Plymouth poor away, good for us. Um, Liverpool wanted Liverpool at home. Um, it's winnable, though, isn't it, guys? It, I know it's a boring draw, Bob, but what do you want, mate? What do you want? We want... Yeah, exactly, Legion at Clips. So we... we the, the whole big cup tie, it's a good thing. That's kind of why I wanted Wrexham, because it's exciting, not in terms of a big cup tie. But I mentioned Man United at the start, but we didn't, let's be honest, we'd have got walloped, wouldn't we? It just They just seem to have a hoodoo over us at Old Trafford. At Ellen Road, it could have been different, maybe, but they just seem to have this annoying hoodoo over us. Um, and Wrexham was just kind of when I thought, yeah, I'd fancy that. I'd fancy that away from home. Good allocation, good home fans, a little bit unknown. Um I can't remember the last time we played Wrexham. You guys will know it was before my time, I believe. Um, but yeah, I don't mind that. That's Leeds uh, guaranteed, really. Um, let's get into uh, the, the 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 rumour mill. Yeah, Carvalho to Hull. I think Millsy, I think the difference with Carvalho to Hull and Carvalho to Leeds United, it was never going to happen. Well, I mentioned it yesterday. It had been, that's for me, that's going to see Hull into the top six, which is going to be very, very, very relevant if Leeds are in the playoffs. Um, but for me, that is a tie where you look at it and you think, um, so that's a that's a signature, I should say, when it comes to Carvalho to Hull, where that just promotes them into the playoffs. It's a it's a it's a season defining signing that for me. The thing with Carvalho is, is he ever is he ever going to get in at Leeds United? Um, in terms of positionally, Rutter Perot potentially in the tens, Bamford in the nine. Obviously, Carvalho's not going to play there. We know he can play central inside winger, inside forward. But Daniel Farker, if he was to uh, change up his system. Four two three one, but he's not going to go to a to 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 a different system to fit someone like Carvalho in. Always plays with the four two three one. Carvalho is not going to get guaranteed minutes. So, yeah, uh, can we not look at Schmodix? Um, we could Robert once again. We've got to have a conversation. Where are these players going to fit in? You know, where are these players going to fit in? Because I'm seeing a lot of Leeds fans now saying that Bamford's the second coming. Um, you, they want him in the in the starting lineup. I'm I'm very similar at the, at this moment in time. 
I would play him in the next game, but I'd also sell him on and get another striker. So I'm in a very, I'm in a quandary at the minute. You know, I like the fact there's a number nine there now, but I would replace his profile and get a better version of Pablo, uh, of, of, of Pablo Bamford. Connor, can you tell I'm ill? A pa Imagine a Pablo Bamford. Jesus, what a hybrid. Um, but a, a Patrick Bamford. Um, I would definitely 100% cash in, sell him on and get a profile like Bamford to actually, you know, enact a number nine, not just have two number 10 slash 9.5s. It's completely pointless. So um, watch Hull drop like a stone. Potentially easy. I'd, I'd be surprised though. I'd be, I'd be surprised. Lucas, exactly, mate. Um, you, you're obviously going to want to see, um, you know, more more minutes for Carvalho. Didn't get any at, at RB Leipzig, but we look at what this guy did at Fulham. And listen, if we were missing that sort of that sort of number ten, which I think a lot of us still think that we are, um, but he is perfect. He is perfect, but he can play off the wing as well. Um, it's a really top signing for Hull. It's a top top signing for Hull. Um, so yeah, uh, he is. I can't. I can't believe he's gone there. To be honest with you, like, but it is minutes, and it just it clearly shows that Carvalho doesn't want to be there just for the name, but in terms of quality. He's on that quality level with with Jed Spence in terms of what he's done previously in the championship, proven as well as as we mentioned several times. And um, guys, um, please make sure that you still that you still liking the video. Of course, keep commenting. We have hit thirty thousand subscribers today. If you want to become a YouTube member, two quid a month. Just press the join button uh, just in the section below. There's a thanks button down there as well. Shout out to Simon and Seatsy Baby for contributing after the video was made in the last one. Uh, really appreciate that one. Uh, but let's get on to some other rumours. So yeah, as I say, Archie Gray, going to be interesting to see if Leeds are going to be able to keep hold of him or not, him him uh, this, this window. Now, um, Adam Pope, I was watching um, their podcast not long ago uh, with him and, and, and Johnny Buchan and they were talking about Charlie Cresswell and they were saying it was a real shame, a real, real shame that Leeds are going to... Uh, shout out to Matthew Chapman as well. Matt, top lad, always a, a big fan of the channel. Um, he's just uh, joined the Patreon. Shout out to you, buddy. Um, but yeah, uh, it's going to be fascinating to see what happens with Cresswell. I think he's going to move on personally. However, um, yeah, I, I'd agree with Adam Pope and I agree with Johnny Buck and it, it's a shame. It's a real, real shame that we're not going to see him. I thought it was a shame that we didn't see him at the weekend. I thought it was his opportunity for Daniel Farker to play him. But Farker um, decided to play Ampadu centre-back. It worked, obviously. Is that going to work in the Championship week in, week out? No. I don't think that would work in the Championship week in, week out. I think we would become a lot weaker. And I would probably rather see Cresswell at centre-back than an Ampadu, if that was ever a scenario. But I would rather see Cresswell at centre-back than a lot of you guys um, you know, like a lot of you guys would, um, you know, suggest over Liam Cooper as well. So, in my opinion, he should be third in the pecking order. Do I think he's anywhere near as good as Strauch and Rodon? Absolutely not. Is he a good passer out from the back? Probably not. Is he quick off the turn? Probably not. So, I'm not absolutely broken that we'd be losing Charlie Cresswell, but I would have liked to have seen us evolve him, coach him, use him as a little bit of a prodigy. I feel coaching has gone out the game a little bit. I feel managers come in and because they've only got a short time span, it's almost like, well, we need the best players possible. We need, um, you know, the best team possible. We're not going to spend time coaching and developing. I thought that's why Mr. Bielsa was so unique, you know, even within hectic schedules, you just saw players developing and developing and developing. It could be senior players, youth players, mid players, just developing every single week. And what a magnificent coach he was. And that's why he's just such a gem because I don't think many managers are able to take the time and hone the skills of the youngsters and the experienced players like Bielsa would, you know, do to the nth degree. Um, so, yeah, uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Uh, Celtic uh, would massively boost Charlie's career, says Chris Ryan. There's been a few rumours of him going up north, but that has been mainly circulated, obviously, around Joe Gelhart, hasn't it? So, um Obviously, we know uh, from earlier on today that Cock is in is in, adv is in advanced talks um, with Eintracht Frankfurt over a permanent move to the Bundesliga side. Max Verber also left Leeds on loan last summer. Is now a regular uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach. That's that's something that we haven't mentioned as well when it comes to Max Verber. Uh, Mönchengladbach are expecting to get that one signed, sealed, and delivered as well. So that's going to be interesting to see how that develops this January, of course. Um, but yeah, everybody, that is really what it comes down to in terms of rumours. You know, we've seen the live draw. Um, we spoke a little bit about... Uh, cheers, Ronnie, for that one, buddy. We
we spoke a little bit about what was going on when it came to uh, uh, Leeds United a little bit earlier in the cup and, and, and with regards to the rumours and, and Archie and, and all that good stuff. But listen, guys, you've got some extra rumours. You want another 35 minutes of this? I did 35 minutes of this this morning. Um, I know a lot of you don't like me leaving the live stream, so thank you. I do have to go every now and again. Uh, but we'll have three podcasts out on the Patreon this week. I'll be back tomorrow morning at around about 10 a.m. for your morning live stream. You will then have um, another live stream in the in the in the evening, which is the debrief. The debrief is going to be back tomorrow evening for the first time in about two weeks, which is great. Make sure you stick around for that one. I will be doing a rumor mill after that as well. <coughs> Connor is grinding out. Uh, smash a like on the video, everyone. If you want to check some uh, merchandise out as well, we've got uh, an extra design that I've put in there just today. Um, Patreon as well is active. Memberships is active, um, and all the proceeds go to just running the channel. So. Yeah, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure today. Thank you so much for your kind messages um, about 30K. I uh, should do a 24 hour, hour live stream for 30K. Um, yeah, guys, um, all the memberships are asking for you guys to like the stream as well. It'd be really appreciated and I will catch you tomorrow. Head on over to the Patreon for, po for podcast, podcast, podcast. And I'll see you in a bit, guys. Uh, cheers.